For more than a century, composers have conceived of the idea of a total work of art, one that combines sound with light, colors, movement, and images, what musicians sometimes refer to as Gestamtkunstwerk. This Thursday, November 17th at 7.30 at the Winnipeg Art Gallery, Winnipeg's Groundswell will be putting on a concert that really does embrace this idea of a total work of art. They'll be welcoming to the stage pianist Megumi Masaki in a concert called Transformation. The concert will consist of four interactive multimedia works that reimagine the piano and pianist's artistic expression through new technologies and transform the listener's concert to an immersive, emotional, and cinematic experience. Curated by Masaki herself, the concert consists of music by T. Patrick Carabray, Keith Hamill, Bob Pritchard, and Gordon Fitzell that was written with and for her. Joining me here over Zoom to talk more about this fascinating concert, I am joined by pianist and curator for Thursday night's concert, Megumi Masaki. Hi, Megumi. It's nice to meet you here over Zoom. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I would start out by asking about the background behind this concert. The themes for the concert are centered very much around social justice issues. Can you talk about why you wanted to do a project like this and some of the themes that you wanted to deal with? Yes. Um, well, I really believe in the power of sound, this, the power of image, the power of movement, the power of literature, text, and how those individual media, when you combine them, the combined expressive potential is way huger than the sum of even the individual parts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a Japanese Canadian pianist and artist, it really means a lot to understand, you know, who I am, who my community uh, is and how I fit into the community, how I can help raise the questions, the que the concerns, the issues around the community, and really sort of combine that power of, of music. In my case, it's the piano. That's my instrument, my voice. And combine the multimedia and bring that power behind an opportunity to motivate dialogue and ask questions, remember wrongs that have happened in the past, and, you know, really evoke um, emotions and reactions of listeners so that they are sharing that journey. They're sharing that experience with me, with the composers. They're feeling motivated to talk amongst themselves, to talk with us. And hopefully our ultimate aim is for change, for positive change, and for us to correct the wrongs and not make the same mistakes that we have in the past. Mm, one of the big ones, uh, you make mention of it in the program, is did we just come across the 80th anniversary of the internment of Japanese Canadians uh, during the Second World War? Is that right? Yes, exactly. So 2022 marks the 80th anniversary, where almost 22,000 Japanese Canadians who were Canadians happened to be of Japanese heritage, uh, often uh, Nisei Sansei born in Canada and during the Second World War they were uprooted they lost all of their homes and their possessions their work even separated from families and they were interned uh, in, B in BC and you know I grew up in Winnipeg um, the survivors of this internment uh, uh, were sent from BC to work in beet farms here in Manitoba. And, you know, I was so lucky that these members of my community, they were my Japanese and family, since uh, I didn't have any family here in Winnipeg where I grew up. They were my family and they shared uh, their stories, mostly through memories of, of questions and, and memories of wonder. Um, really, I could hear their resilience. They worked hard, they established new roots, new homes, many stayed in Manitoba, and they were members of my community and my family here. And they really mm -hmm. shared those stories, and they really formed who I was. 
you know, and I'm I'm so honored um, and privileged to have the opportunity to have these discussions with the Japanese Canadian members of my community. Uh, Art Mickey was a, a powerful voice in our Japanese Canadian community here in Manitoba, was really one of the motivating forces to uh, bring about the redress uh, with Brian Mulrooney here for the Japanese Canadians nationally. And uh, his brother, Roy Mickey, edited this beautiful book of letters between Muriel, Muriel Kitagawa and her brother during the war. She didn't publish them during, during her lifetime, but Roy carefully gathered the letters and edited them to this powerful, beautiful, um, painful, but also humorous and... Um, you know, really wanted us to remember what had happened to, to them and so that this would be understood for generations to come. So with Bob Pritchard, the composer in BC, who has uh, family members who are survivors also of the Japanese-Canadian internment and um, neighbours, uh, we've been talking about this for years and we really wanted to mark this 80th anniversary with this new work for piano and um, music technology, e-sensors, uh, really vi uh, electronics, visual images, uh, really to tell uh, the story through the power of music and the power of archival footage, um, the text by Kiragawa. And also we have recorded um, members of our community uh, throughout this, they're scattered throughout this piece, they speak on and represent the questions and the concerns of the Japanese community through this work. And um, yeah, so, it's it's deeply meaningful and uh, deeply emotional, and I can't wait to share it with yeah. the community here. So I want to back up. The name of the piece by Bob Pritchard is, help me out with the name, is it Dushte? Is that right? Doshite, yes. Doshite. Doshite? Yeah, Doshite. Uh, and, it, and it deals uh, with the subject of the 21,000 Japanese Canadians. Um, can you talk a little bit about the sensory hand responsive user garment that you're going to be wearing as, as you perform this piece? Yes, it is um, actually a, a specially formed uh, costume with sensors that sort of stripes along the arms uh, over the heart over the right chest and with um, specially crafted gloves, I can use the um, this shrug and the different parts of this costume to bring and evoke the voices from the past and to um, play the, I use my body really in movement, in theatrical gesture, speaking as well to bring the voices together as as part of the fabric of this musical work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's the four uh, composers, uh, T. Patrick Carabray, Keith Hamill, Bob Pritchard, and Gordon Fitzell. Uh, we've talked about Bob Pritchard. How did you approach the other composers and how much direction did you give them in regards to what you wanted them to do and to compose? Well, um, Pat Carebray is originally from Winnipeg. He's now based in Vancouver, and I've known him since my teens. Um, he was so influential in my um, development and growth as a pianist and as a contemporary music, um, yeah, like curiosity. His music combines things from our, our childhood, so rock bands and and um, mythology and storytelling. He's one of the greatest storytellers, I think, for piano. Um, mm. So this is the third piece of a trilogy um, in collaboration with the poetry of Margaret Atwood. Um, and it's called Orpheus One, even though it's the third piece. Um, they've been looking at the Orpheus myth from different perspectives. And in this perspective, we, um, inspired by Margaret Atwood's poetry poem by the same title, Orpheus One, it tells the Orpheus myth uh, from Eurydice's perspective. It challenges and asks, how is this Orpheus myth a love story? And why does Orpheus get to choose the fate of Eurydice? Why does he get to turn around and decide if I get to stay? And Margaret Atwood really puts those questions to the listener and to, um, to us all, asking, 
she wants to take control of her fate. Maybe she wants to be there. Maybe she wants to stay there and doesn't want to return to the living world with Orpheus. And just that perspective um, of this myth that has been told over and over that Mor Orpheus goes down and rescues her from hell. And, you know, he tries to take her back, but then he makes the mistake of turning. And then, you know, her fate is is forever in in uh, in the darkness. And, and, um, and Margaret, Atwood says, wait a second, you know, how is that a love story? Why didn't she get to say? So mm -hmm. that's how so, this and it's a, a, so a sorry, it, and it's a paper piano, a toy piano. Um, there's this really cool synthesizer uh called the Rolly Seaboard Grand. It's sort of this this rubber surface of a synthesizer. So I can I can like do rubato on this keyboard, I can play microtones. It's like this. It's just like surrounding me with like this keyboards from like, you know, the 80s. So that when we were in a rock band with all these like synthesizers and keyboards and we really get to sort of groove. And um, yeah, it's a really cool piece. And, Pete, and Pat has um, paired it with this video he took of uh, his travels from Winnipeg to Brandon during a, a snowstorm. And that sort of symbolizes you know, Hades, hell is sort of this, like yeah, yeah. this blizzard of darkness. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really cool uh, piece that evokes these powerful questions of, you know, being able to choose for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another piece on, on the program that I'm going to get to talk about Keith Hamill's piece, Piano Games. Uh, it's described as a video game controlled by the pianist. Is that right? How's that going to work? And can you help tell us a little bit about what hand tracking is? Yes, absolutely. So Piano Games by Keith Hamill, um, based in Vancouver, BC. He's actually born in Morden, so he's also Manitoba Connection. Um, this is the first video game computer game that is controlled in live performance by the piano and by myself. And what Keith has done is he's created a new whole new technology, built a grid around the piano. And he with, you know, webcams and hardware and software that he's developed, he's tracking my gestures uh, as I'm moving along the keyboard, on the keyboard, above the keyboard. I can shoot flames with my fingers, um, both hands. Um, I'm, I'm there's different phases of this video game that I'm battling against the forces. And it really is a chance to, you know, merge the world's a world of video game, things that are really popular and really common to everybody and bring that into sort of the, the concert experience. And what we're hoping is to really break down those barriers. You know, people love video games and the music behind video games is really quite powerful and really, um, really something that people are really love and are drawn to. And we're hoping to invite audiences that might not go to concerts but love video games and watch a pianist struggle and fight with this video game and and it, you know it goes into these new worlds where you're transported into space you're transported into color and all of the gestures that I make at the piano not only influence the sounds that are coming out of the piano the piano is also processed into sounds that are created and being infused into the soundtrack of the video game and all of my body movements are really part of this video game so the audience is watching me play this video game live and i'm hoping that they will root for me in the end to overcome the forces and 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 win yeah i saw the little trailer on the groundswell website and there's like there's a big screen behind the piano is, is, is what I can imagine. There's a, and, and it looks like you're surrounded by a, a great deal of, of technology. So the video game is, will be up on that screen. Is that right? Yes. And, and the cool thing is, is that if I don't move my hands and if I don't play the piano and I don't gesture above and use the space, really the piano becomes sort of this visual instrument as well as a as an acoustic instrument, because all, all the space around above, you know, a, across the piano is used to interact with the video game. And we use a giant screen. And so what you see is the video game being played by me and you see the video game going through the phases. And the cool thing is, is that if I don't move my hands and if, I, and if I'm not being tracked and if I'm not playing anything, nothing happens. 
There's just sort of the background of the video game that would just sort of sort of go on in infinity. But just like when you open up a video game and you see like, you know, the starting track, well, you you have to activate the figures, you have to activate the action, you have to choose which, which, you know, instruments that you're going to battle with, or you're going to journey with, or you're going to the speed of which you go and the, the way you turn the corners and how you move throughout this video game. And that's what the audience is going to be seeing. They're actually seeing the video game being created live by the piano and by me. Mm-hmm. And the by last... Keith, because Keith sits at the computer and he's actually playing the computer game with me, of course. So we really are a team. This is not just me, but this is Keith Hamill and me working together, playing this video game together. Mm -hmm. The last piece on the program is a piece by uh, Gordon Fitzell. Uh, It's his piece, Ai Weiwei, on poetry. And it's set to text by Chinese artists and activists, Ai Weiwei. Can you talk talk about this piece and some of the themes that it deals with? Yes. Um, you know, part of this um, in motivation behind this program was transformation and how we can, you know, celebrate human resilience. Um, really, how do we as a as members of our community, as human beings, how do we use our voices to enact change to, you know, it's a call of, of action. And it really is, Ai Weiwei is this is a philosopher, is a Chinese activist. He wrote this um, misostic text from this poem, this essay on, on poetry. And we use this text, I speak this text into a walkie-talkie that is resonating the piano strings like voices from within this instrument, voices mm-hmm. from Ai Weiwei. Uh, you hear the text, you hear his um, challenge he um, the challenges that he and his father, of course, uh, faced f- from the Chinese um, uh, um, government, uh, repressing the voices, questioning uh, the this seeking for social du- justice, and and really hoping that we transcend the the darkness and we transcend this oppression and we can become free and we can remember and use these words by activists like Ai Weiwei, like the piano. Um, the piano is heavily prepared. So the piano is, is you know, it, it's, it's this big instrument that we see this as a symbol of Western, um, uh, you know, tr- traditional classical music. And Gordon trans trans poses and transforms the instrument to be bells, to be gongs, to have voices inside, to to make noise, to create this pureness that is, you know, something beyond us. Um, and so we have all of these layers, the poetry, the motions, um, the the care, the subtlety, and and especially the profound text challenging all of us to listen, to think about what others, uh, to raise others, to lift others that are suffering, and and to come together as a human race to make uh, and everything that we do really a, a respect for in one another and a justice and equity for everyone. And it's a it's an incredible piece um, mm. that asks, and maybe I'll I'll ask. Um, I'll, I'll I'll just quote the last the line and what I Weiwei has written and what you'll hear in this po- per piece is most importantly to be shared with one another, old or young, known or unknown, mm-hmm. and that is this level of the world to understand. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the message that this piece brings is that we want to transcend our own limitations our own barriers, our own restrictions, and really seek equity through our own individual actions and thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things about the concert is you not only have to play the piano, uh, but there's all, like, again, from the trailer, there's a lot of technology uh, happening with this concert. Uh, Were there any logistical problems when uh, you were preparing each each one of the pieces? 
Like, yes, absolutely. Inside, like, aside from just playing the piano, you actually have to do all the all the extraneous stuff. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Well, you know, it's like when you're mm-hmm. imagining setting up for a pop concert. Uh, recently, Elton John was traveling across Canada. And, um, you know, when you go to a pop concert, you're not expecting Elton John to sit at a piano and sing. You know, you're expecting a show. And we're with each of the four pieces that involve piano and multimedia and and technology, each one has a completely dis- a different setup. Each one has completely different technical um, uh, equipment and a technical software and uh, and and technical um, excitement, but also you know challenges. And we have to set up lighting. We have to think about the electronics. We have um, surround sound or as many speakers as we can. We've got huge screens. We've got projectors. We have to think about, you know, li- you know, the lighting so I can still see and play, but dark enough that people, it's like a cinematic experience. So we're really hoping that when the listener comes in, that of course the technology is there to facilitate the musical expression. We don't mm-hmm. want to wow you by the technology. We want to wow you by the art, by the 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 feelings and the emotion and the wow of the of the screen and the visual images and the sounds and the motions and the text and and we want to give you space to experience that individually but yes absolutely we're hauling in so much gear um you know we've got a crew to set up um just like you would set up for we're on tour so we've got bags and bags of of cables and microphones and stands and projectors and lighting and um the panels like mic'd and i'm mic'd i'm wearing um body suits and sensory um e-sensors that are being tracked by computers and we have to build grids and lighting grids and and for gordon fitzell's piece we're actually going to have a piano in the foyer as sort of like an installation with its own sort of separate space, creating that atmosphere of, in a way, you know, Ai Weiwei and his father, they were isolated, they were exiled from their country. And Mm -hmm. we we want to present that a little bit, that atmosphere Mm -hmm. with the piano off stage and in its own space with its own sort of really mysterious and and a little bit mythical and, and, um, you know, put people in that transcendental sort of trance-like um, mindset to experience this work that is extremely theatrical, very dramatic, very powerful, sometimes very dark, uh, but also very light and and you know curious. It's I'm I'm hoping that people will will want to come uh, and look at the piano because once it's prepared, it's almost like a piece of art in itself. Um, it it is a, it's a it's an instrument of wonder. Um, and each piece does set up for its own sort of work of art and its own um, um, magic in a way. And, you know, when I speak with Keith Hamill and, and Bob Pritchard and, and Pat Carabray and Gordon Fitzell, all four of them want the technology to be hidden in a way. You know, it, it, they want the magic to be there for the audience and for me as a performer. And they're in the in the audience playing and performing with me. They're making sure that the technology runs smoothly. And um, yeah, they've created a lot of software, especially for each of the pieces. And um, But we welcome the audience and listeners to come afterwards and, and ask questions and find out more about the technology and and uh, about each piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, Magumi, this has just been great. Uh, it has been so wonderful to hear about these pieces on the concert this Thursday night. It sounds like it's going to be completely immersive and engaging. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me. This has just been great. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. And I so look forward to uh, sharing this musical journey transformation with Winnipeg, my hometown, which is uh, always the best place to be able to uh, perform and connect with my family and friends and community. Mm. Thanks so much. For our Classic 107 listeners, I've written an article about the concert and I have embedded a direct link to Groundswell's event bright page. So if you want more details and tickets, you can go to classic107.com. Tickets will also be available at the door. The cost is certainly right. It is pay what you can, how you can. Megumi, thanks again. All the best on Thursday. Thanks, Chris.